We're going to begin the Buildings, Food Service, and Transportation Committee. Please note that all committee members are here, myself, Dr. Traha, and Mr. Harding, and other board members are also present, just stepped out for a minute, the superintendent and his staff. Number two, consideration of approval for use of Terrebonne High School's track. The committee recommends that the board approve the request of Homer Christian School to waive policy file E1.6 use of facilities relative to relative to the usage fee for Terrebonne High School's track for the 2024 track season, February 6, 2024 to May 2, 2024, for practices only on weekdays, provided that the necessary insurance, nonprofit status, and all other school board policy requirements are met, and approval is obtained from the school's principal. So move, Mr. Harding. Second. Second, Dr. Traha. Um, do we have Mr. Ms. Wendy Delgado here, would you like to come up? How you doing? Just Hi. introduce yourself and... I'm Wendy Delgado. I'm the head track coach at Homer Christian School. Okay. So, um, do you have any questions and uh, committee members' questions for her? No. All right. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank okay. you. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, public comments? Ms., uh, Mr. Harding? Dr. Trahan? Yes, sir. Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Consideration of approval of bids received on meat and frozen items for 23-24 spring session. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received, meeting all specifications on meat and frozen items for the 23-24 spring session from Diamond Food Distributors, Inc., Jefferson, Louisiana, in the amount of $363,889.65, and Pond Food Corporation, Ponchatoula, Louisiana, in the amount of $503,169.70, funds to be derived from the Child Nutrition Program Fund. So move, Dr. Traha. Second, yes, sir. Mr. Harding. Any public comments? Dr. Traha? No, sir. Mr. Harding? Any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Number four, consideration of approval of bids received on canned and dry foods for the 23-24 spring session. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received meeting all specifications on canned and dry goods for the 23-24 spring session from Diamond Food Distributors, Inc., Jefferson, Louisiana, in the amount of $217,689.45, Pond Food Corporation, Ponchatoula, Louisiana, in the amount of $251,087.13, and Forcom Solutions, Prairieville, Louisiana, in the amount of $37,169.50, funds to be derived from the Child Nutrition Program Fund. So move, Mr. Harding. Second, Dr. Traha. Any public comments? Mr. Harding, Dr. Traha. Any other board members? Any objections? Motion passes. Number five, consideration of approval of, for authorization to advertise for bids for kitchen equipment. The committee recommends that the board authorize the Child Nutrition Department to advertise for bids for kitchen equipment, funds to be derived from the Child Nutrition Program Fund. So move, Dr. Traha. Second, Mr. Harding. Any public comments? Dr. Traha? No, sir. Mr. Harding? Any committee uh, other members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Number six. Uh, matter bearing upon update of bus driver shortage and vacancies. If Mr. Obear would please come to the front. And board members, I believe you got, yeah, you got a handout on uh, effectiveness of pay increase. Mr. Uh, Obear, it's good to see you. Uh, Welcome back you. to work. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first, I just want to say good evening to everyone. And uh, I'm just going to go over uh, the effectiveness of the pay increase that uh, was given to all the bus drivers. And uh, I just want to try to make some comparisons on uh, before the pay increase and then after the pay increase. So if, if you look at the sheet I gave you guys, as of July 2023, before the pay increase, we had um, 26 vacant routes. 
We uh, only had six substitute drivers, and uh, we received 11, 11 applications online and 20 walk-in applications between July 2023 to September 5th, so a total of 31 uh, applications. If you go down to as of November 2023, after the pay increase, you'll see we're right now, right now we have four vacant routes. So we went from 26 to four vacant routes. We hired 22 full-time drivers. We hired 13 substitute drivers. And uh, we received 35 online applications and 32 walk-in applications between September 6, 2023 through November 2023. And if you look at the application, part before and after you can see that before the pay increase we received just 31 applications then after the pay increase we received 67 applications so the people are coming uh, due to the raise so it is effective as far as getting the people to come to the transportation department and fill out for a bus driver position also at this time we have eight drivers currently in training right now eight of them so when those and let me just go back to the four vacant routes too. So the four vacant routes, we all, we have we have substitute drivers on those on those routes as we speak. They're on those routes, doing those routes. They're just waiting to be promoted to full time. And how it works with the with the route with the routes, um, those routes have to be advertised before I can just throw somebody on on that route and say, hey, here you go, it's your route. So we have to advertise those routes, uh, and we put them up for uh, to be advertised for about at least three weeks. So after three weeks, after the three weeks are up, uh, if a full timer does not, or another bus driver does not with more seniority, want any of those four routes, then I can hand those four routes out to sub drivers. So right now the sub drivers are just subbing on it. I got the people, they're just subbing on it, they're just waiting for the word to become full time. So uh, if you, those four plus I got eight more uh, that I discussed a little earlier that are in training. And from my understanding, four of those eight are about to go get tested to take their third party test so they can go ahead and start driving a school bus. Then the other, the other four will be a little longer, maybe a couple of more weeks after that. And uh, I think today I received two, two more applications today uh, for uh, people wanting to be a, a bus driver. So overall, the, uh, the pay increase has been effective in getting people to apply for bus driver openings in the transportation department. So, uh, with that being said, I'm, I'm, I came back, and I was I was very happy to see that it was working. Awesome. So it's working. These numbers are outstanding. I'm I'm so happy uh, we decided to do that. Um, you know, a little less stress now. Uh, yeah, a little less stress. <laughs> a little less stress. A little less stress. <laughs> but but, you know, it's a. It's a different know, kind. Yeah, it's a different. I have a different stresses. Yes, right, yes, right. yes. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, Dr. Trump. When, when is the last time you were able to stand before the board and tell us, tell the board that your routes were fully staffed? <laughs> Did it ever I, happen? I don't think it since so I've been here. We're making history. Here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so when these eight are are out of training, and it, <laughs> after the four vacant routes get advertised and changed to full, we are fully staffed. Yes, and we're actually we're fully staffed now. I don't even have to wait for the eight. I have four substitute uh, drivers on those routes right now, just waiting for me to tell them that, that it's a great their route. Feeling? Yes, ma'am. And those eight that come out of training will actually be sub drivers until someone to another route frees up for me to promote I know, them. And I know we're always going to have people fall sick at the last minute or have family emergencies or something that pulls drivers out. But so we always we still going to have some issues with an occasional late bus for the parents. But we are fully staffed. We are that fu is just awesome. Yes, ma'am. We're fully staffed. And the only way I, I can see that because I hadn't been getting any any information from any principals or anything about any late buses. So knock on wood for that. But the other thing is, is that uh, if 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 a regular driver calls off for any reason, then that's when we might, you know, have some issues where if a driver calls off and now I got to double up or mm -hmm. do something of that sort, then, of course, yeah. that'll happen. But as far as being staffed, we're we're, we're actually fully staffed as I speak. Awesome news. Awesome news. Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Harding. Yeah, uh, thank you uh, again uh, to reiterate what uh, what uh, Dan stated. It's good to have you back. You know, and I know you're even glad to come back to see the households and in, in better hands than was when you left it. 
in reference to uh, with employees. Yes. Uh, you know, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Mr. Ogeron, also the staff, and also yourself, because I know that's a plan that you guys have been working on uh, for a long time. We talked about a couple of things that we need to get done, and I can see that the plan is going forward, and hope we can continue on moving forward. Uh, actually, I received a phone call from um, another parish trying to figure out how did we do it. So I think so. I think what's going to happen is that you, yeah, I think what's going to happen is that we uh, we set the model. Mm -hmm. Everybody was going to pick uh, copy behind us. You know what I'm saying? So again, uh, uh, thank Mr. Olderon and his staff. And who was on the committee, Mr. Olderon? Did y'all have a little committee? I can't remember who was on there. This you and Ms. Obel. Uh, Mr. Tarver and uh, we had several drivers. Several drivers. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's good. I think you guys came up with a good plan, and. Uh, and the plan is good enough. Hope you can stay around a little longer, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Lagarde. <clears throat> How you doing, sir? Glad to see you back. Thank you. Now, are we all, are we fully staffed? Because I know we cut a lot of routes. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of phone calls at the beginning of school from parents. Can we go back to our old routes? Then we still will be fully staffed? Because uh, we got a lot of kids walking. Well, what's going up? There. Well, what's going up happening is is that uh, I'm gonna start filling up my sub list now, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, these eight people, when they get out of training, they're gonna actually go straight to the sub list. Uh, so if we go back to adding, adding routes and stuff, I, I feel confident if we go back to adding routes that we still should be okay. Uh, if we add a route here or there, uh, because people are complaining because they don't have bus service <laughs> here or there. So all the routes we cut, would we be comfortable with drivers? Oh yeah, we'd be good. I think we're good. I think we'll be good. And I think we can, uh, I know me and Mr. Ogeron, we talked about uh, once we get this thing fully staffed, we was looking at going back and then look at some other areas maybe where we can uh, do something. Okay. Because I'm glad we got drivers, but I still got constituents walking in bad areas and little kids walking in unsafe areas. So I don't want to take nothing away from anything, but I want my kids first safety. Mm -hmm. And you know, I want to pat us on the back when we fully back where kids are not walking on the roadside or walking early in the morning where the bus could pick them up in front of their house and go back. I don't want us to pat ourselves on the back and we cut routes and kids mm -hmm. still walking and we got drivers. Now, if we fully back and parents are happy and we're not passing kids and we're not doing these community stops, then I'm happy. But until we get that clear, you know, then I think and, we could pet ourselves. And, right. and, I, and I think after we get rid of this, this, after this class and maybe one more class, we should be able to probably do what you're talking about. Okay. Maybe getting back to picking up some of those kids. That, now, me and Mr. Ogeron, we talked about that. That's in our plans as well. We talked about <clears throat> maybe going a little deeper and picking up maybe a few more kids now since okay. we back full of staff. So we talked about that as okay. well. Thank you, sir. No Mr. Problem. Ford. So Mike actually hit on what I wanted to say, but I would think that uh, I definitely want to see every one of these substitute bus drivers become full timers. Um, I think we could be strategic in which bus routes we implement, re-implement the ones that were that were maybe cut, uh, and looking at those areas the most critical, but also not put stretching ourselves too thin again. Mm -hmm. But like you said, if you have another plan for another training after this, and the people are going to keep coming in, then by all means, you know, keep rolling with it. But I think. I think you guys are on the right track. So just be strategic, you know, look at elementaries and critical areas first, probably high traffic areas. And then from there, I think we'll be good. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ms. Benoit. Um, yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Roseanne. I, I'm delighted that this um, increase in uh, hourly wage seemed to have solved the problem. And I, I, in particular, I'm glad that um, we're not we're not so desperate that we can even be selective in getting the right drivers, you know, not just taking any driver. And um, I think that this is just the beginning, that we'll continue to have more applicants and that, you know, you will be in that position where you, you're you going to have the best bus drivers. Yes, ma'am. And I, and, I, and I don't see it stopping. I'm, 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 I'm really serious. I see that they're coming. Yeah. They're coming. That's awesome. And I'm glad wow. you're well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Dehart. Thank you. Mr. O'Bear. Whenever we have a rainy day schedule, I don't think the law has changed. It's 
supposed to be picking up as close, not, not door to door, but close as you can? Or are we still going to follow that? Yes. Um, rainy day schedule, we're supposed to be picking everyone up in front of the house and dropping them off in front of the house, with the exception that the bus can get to in front of the house. If the bus cannot pass in front of the house, we drop them off as close as possible yes. uh, to their door. Uh, some streets we can't go down, especially uh, if the bus is too big or what have you, and they walk up to the, to the front, then we don't have a choice but to drop them off, you know, at yeah. the front. But if we can get to their house, we will drop them off. We should be dropping them off during rainy days in front of the house. Well, in years past, whenever there was no proper turnaround at the end of a street, we worked with the parish to try and get some turnaround. Mm -hmm. And I know mm -hmm. new development, so if that exists again, I'd like to know because I'm just saying we, we together, all of us, can work on trying to get proper turnarounds, mm -hmm. safe turnarounds, to where you can turn around, because guess what? Not only do we service those streets, garbage trucks and everybody else goes up and down those streets. Yes, sir. So whenever it rains, just like today, they should have been picked up door mm -hmm. to door. Anytime the windshield wipe is on, that's the way the rule was then. And it's still and, the rule. And I researched this before this raise came in there, and I didn't see any change, but I want to make sure that I was correct on mm -hmm. that. No, yeah, it's still the rule. I, that's what I tell them. If you got to put those wipers on, rainy day. Um, um, and we must pick everybody up in front of the house and drop them off in front of the house if the bus can go down there. So that's, that's still the rule. Yeah. Still the rule. Mr. Hamner. Oh, uh, wow. This is encouraging. Paying people what they worth, the top salaries in the area, from having no drivers, and I say none, you know, all those empty routes, to having an <clears throat> influx of people wanting to come to Terrebonne Parish to work. This, this is an experiment that worked. Yes, sir. You know, imagine if we could do this for our teachers and paras and janitors and cooks the influx of people that would come to Terrebonne Parish. Good job. Good job. Thank I'm telling you, I'm impressed. Thank you. Appreciate it. Before you, you step down, um, again, I want to echo what Mr. Harding said. You know, this, this was an idea, I believe, that began with Mr. Ogeron. And um, I'm not running for office either. <laughs> this is an idea. That, you know, and it's... <laughs> but... Change, um, change is hard, because when we first brought this to the board and, and it was discussed, it, it was a fight. You know, um, however, um, it's been pulled off. It's absolutely impressive. So again, to echo what Mr. Harding said, I, you know, thank Mr. Ogeran for this great idea. Um, anything that we can do in the future to make <coughs> all areas more successful, I think we need to be on board and do that. And, uh, and also to your committee and to you guys for all the hard work. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right. Thank you. Number seven. Um, substitute motion for number seven. I don't know if y'all have it at y'all's desk. Um, consideration of rejection of bids received for the Hurricane Ida contents replacement utility storage shed that the board reject all bids received for the utility storage shed bid in response to Hurricane Ida due to the first low bid being declared non-responsive and the second low bidder withdrawing their bid and authorize the purchasing department to re-advertise the bid. So move. so move Dr. Traha, second Mr. Harding. Any public comments? Dr. Traha? No, sir. Mr. Harding? Any board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Number eight, consideration of approval of bids received for site improvements for Acadian Modular Building Project. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received, meaning all specifications for the site improvements for Modular Building Project in response to Hurricane Ida at Acadian Elementary School from TBT Contracting, Inc., 
of Louisiana, P.O. Box 190, Thibodeau, Louisiana, 70302, in the amount of $480,100, and establish a total project budget in the amount of $535,452, funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds, $481,906.80, and local funds, $53,545.20, pending receipt of all necessary documents, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move Mr. Harding, second, second Dr. Traha. Any public comments? Mr. Harding, Dr. Traha, no, sir. any other board members? Uh, any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Number nine, consideration of approval of bids received for the demolition of Grand Caillou Elementary project that the board approve and accept the lowest bid received meeting all specifications for the demolition project in response to Hurricane Ida at Grand Caillou Elementary School from A Bear Farm and Land Demolition, LLC, 1319 Highway 55, Montague, Louisiana, 70377, in the amount of $240,000. Accept alternate number one to demolish cafeteria building at Old Grand Caillou School in the amount of 46000 and establish a total budget Project budget in the amount of $320,528. Funds to be derived from FEMA reimbursement funds, $242,074.80. And local funds, $78,453.20. Pending receipt of all necessary documents and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move Dr. Traha, second Mr. Harding. Any public comments? Dr. Traha? Mr. Harding, any other board members? Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Number 10, consideration of approval for substantial completion of the security improvements for Acadian Elementary, Broadmoor Elementary, Elysian Fields Elementary, Honduras Elementary, and Oaklawn Middle Schools. The committee recommends that the board approve and accept the substantial completion dated October 14, 2023 for the security improvements at Acadian Elementary, Broadmoor Elementary, Elysian Fields Elementary, Honduras Elementary, and Oaklawn Middle Schools subject to the punch list upon completion of the punch list and final inspection, balancing change order, and receipt of the lien-free certificate, authorize the release of retainage, and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move, Mr. Harding. Second, Dr. Traha. Any public comments? Mr. Harding, Dr. Traha. Yes, sir. Any other board members? Mr. Mr. Ogeron. Just uh, thank Daniel Bruce for uh, orchestrating this with Mr. Tarbert's uh, efforts and. and um, it, it's not as easy as you might think to put fencing around a school. There's a lot of design work that goes into that. It's not like us at home putting up a fence. So thank you for all that diligence on getting these projects jump, uh, done and getting to our next set of schools that we're going to perimeter fence and keep them safer. Thank you. Okay. Any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. Number 11, consideration of approval of surplus property located at the rear of 1124 St. Charles Street in Homa. Uh, the committee recommends that the board declare vacant property, approximately five acres of land, located at the rear of 1124 St. Charles Street, Old Terrebonne High School baseball field behind Southdown Elementary School. As surplus, authorize the superintendent to have the property surveyed and or appraised. Authorize the sale of said property in accordance with the applicable laws all transactions subject to board attorney review and approval and further authorize the board president to sign all necessary documents pertaining thereto. So move, so move Dr. Traha. Second, uh, Mr. Okay. So, so second by Mr. Harding for discussion. Um, any public comments? You want to talk on it now or? or okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer whatever okay. I can. So Dr. Traha? No, sir. Mr. Harding. Yeah, I'll, I'm just going to Okay, yeah, yes, sir. So, so 
Good question. Uh, the property is the exact property that we went into an agreement with Terrebonne Parish government. It's the property that the baseball field of Terrebonne High used to be on. So, so right across the little canal, we had a baseball field there. And what they needed it for was a, a retention pond. So they literally dug it out. So for us, there's not a whole lot of options for us because it's a pit currently. So there's a, 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 a piece of property on this map you see right adjacent to it. It's a wooded piece of property. It's like a little oasis in the middle of the, you know, a lot of businesses. They're looking to make a retirement community, little, little condos or something like that. They want that piece to be a, a added feature, a pond of sorts for that community to have like a water feature in their little, little community. There's an access point that they use, no, no, nothing to do with us, but if you look on, off a of corporate, there's like a little boulevard that leads into that piece. It's not landlocked. Um, so we, we had an agreement. They, parish government in, in the past gave us money to erect a baseball field and demolish the old baseball field. Mr. DeHar was actually president involved in that transaction and it's still our property. So um, Stan Duval's been working with us on just, just making sure all these pieces are in place. So we just need to get it appraised and then we could, we could try and sell it or whatever for the appraisal value. Okay, so basically I know exactly what you're talking about and actually how long it was. Yeah. Right, right. I think he and Mr. Hawk was probably the only two on the board. He was president. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, and I don't know, I just I can't, I know what a property is. I'm just trying to visualize actually what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's not a property that we're going to actually have to have later on or something we can do later on for something that's bad. Not, or just, I, I, I don't think so. I don't know how we do anything with it other than. Because, because it's because, because, where it's at. It's not. And, and, and the fact that it's it's been excavated, like, Four or five feet deep right now. It's a big. It's literally a pit. Um, the whole oh, you. next. All right. Thank you. Okay, I have Mr. Ford next. Okay. So my concern with this is, I'm okay with us putting this up for appraisal and potential sale. The problem I have is it's going to appraise less as a dug out piece of Perhaps. property than it Perhaps. would have uh, what it was before. So. What I'm hopeful of is, uh, based on the appraisal, if we can reject bids if they're not high enough, because I should think, as a board, we should accept bids that <coughs> would be commensurate with what the property would be had they not dug it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you then the second that. question I would have, the follow-up question is, what would that property, what would the monies be used for? I, I don't like the idea of saying, Okay, here you go, Terrebonne Parish, use this property, then they dig it out, and then, uh, what, eight years later, all of a sudden, oh, we want to buy that property. Well, now it's valued a lot less than it would have been otherwise. So that's my concern, and, uh, and I'd like to see where that money's going to be spent. If that money from that sale of that property may go towards uh, new athletic facilities throughout the district, uh, then that would be a good idea, but I'll, I would just like to see where the money's going. Thank you. Mr. Lagarde? Yeah, I would, I would agree with Mr. Ford. I, would, I think it will be appraised a lot less. And who is Dick? We're selling it to who? We're not selling it to anybody, I mean, but the one that reached out somebody is, somebody is uh, his last name of San Giuseppe. Oh. Dr. Oh. San Giuseppe's son. Oh, I so think they fa the family owns the property. Okay, so they're going to put a, re a community, a retirement community, there, so they're gonna make some money. We should make some money as well. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that. Yes, yeah, sir. I mean they're gonna make some money, and if it's a pit, they're gonna fill it in. They won't. They're not gonna keep it a pit. I think at least that's what he shared with us that he's keeping it like a, a pond or some he's kind make of place it a nice, for people to fish. Pretty fit. piece. We should Perhaps. make some money as well. Mr. Dehart. You're Thank next. you. I'm just trying to give the board members some information and you make up your own mind which y'all <coughs> think is the right move. But to start off very briefly as best I can, whenever we went into a government agreement with the parish that needed a retention pond, we got monies to transfer the lights, the baseball equipment, everything on that field to the other field that saved 
offset a lot of costs for the new field that we, we put. For those reasons, not only that, Mr. Merlin Leret was in charge of the project and we got over a million dollars worth of dirt because whenever they started pumping it out, there was a lot of weather coming up, if I recall correctly, and it was getting ready to do a lot of rain, which would have delayed the project and cost the contractor or the parish more money. So what they did, they stacked it up sky high, looked like a mountain on two sides, and then they started hauling it off. And I'm not joking, behind Homer Junior High, many <coughs> other locations, even by the, uh, the warehouse uh, <coughs> uh, freezer, they, they brought dirt. And all I'm saying to you is that we got free dirt because the time was a factor to get it out of there to where the retention pond wouldn't be delayed the project because so many days and rain days and stuff interfe interfered with that. So what I'm saying is that we got a good fair market value for the property because it's now a pond. And to do this here, I'm just saying it, it relieves us of liability. That's one factor that I'm considering of having somebody interested. And the way the law states, and our attorney's here, if you get it appraised, we have to at least get at least minimal appraisal, if I'm correct. Am I right? There, there's a percentage. I don't have that 75. Yes, 75. But what I'm trying to say, we can reject anything, just like everybody's discussing, but I know there's a, a format and a procedure to follow correct. legally. To my knowledge, yes. we've been working yes. with you guys to make sure that those procedures are followed. Um, I, unfortunately, don't yeah. have all the details on this particular Well, yeah. I'm not saying that I, I, I perfectly explained it perfectly, but all I'm saying to you is that it's not about gi giving it away cheaper. I don't want that wrong impression to any of you. What I'm saying right now, the monies we gained already by having free dirt and moving all the equipment would have cost us a lot more to get the field that we have today. And I'm telling you, not because it's a turf field, we wouldn't have had a lot of things done. And our trustees remodeled the stadium and we changed all of the seats there. That was cost savings. And all I'm saying to you, the parish government helped us to achieve the Taj Mahal, I call it a Taj Mahal ball field uh, because of the resources and, and not no deals cut, the procedure that was done. We didn't expect to get the free dirt, but I'm telling right now, if I'm wrong, Mr. Lee Rett can come up and, and say it, uh, we got all of that dirt and we utilize it instead of have to buy dirt to help fix different areas. That's all I have, thank you. Mr. Hamner. Oh Lord, I forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> Y'all laughing at me? <laughs> Come on. Um, <laughs> uh, if, we, if, if the committee passes this, uh, we're not locked into anything tonight, huh? Um, no, but it has to go for the uh, board. Yeah. And if some other deal comes along in the meantime, you, can, you don't have to. Uh, we're not doing this tonight, or the committee's not going to do this tonight because of a pending deal with uh, a private citizen. Um, okay, thank you. Mr. Ford? Oh. Okay. Although I appreciate the fact that we did get monies from the previous transaction and it did benefit our district, it only benefited one baseball team and we have a, three other high school baseball teams that could use some extra funds and some better facilities. So that's why I asked the question of, of where this money goes. I have no doubt that we're going to follow state policy and state law, and we're going to get, you know, the first time it goes out for bid, I think the, the number is 90% has to be at least 90% of appraised value. And if it comes back, it's 85. And then if it goes back, it's got to be 75. Uh, either way, we should get monies from this property. And I do agree with Roger Dale. This is a liability on our part. We do need to get rid of it. Uh, Retention ponds are a real popular thing, and they have been over the last 10, 12 years here in Louisiana. But I just want to make sure if we're getting funds from this, then that money's going to go towards the other, at least the other three high school baseball teams and softball teams in the area. Yes, Terrebonne did benefit from that, and they have a really nice field, but they're the only ones that have a really nice field up to date. Now, we have been doing some improvements, and that's that's definitely uh, welcomed and, and everyone appreciates that, but 
Uh, right now, Terrebonne is the only field with lights. So if anything, the other fields should get some lights and you know, some, some benefits from that as well. Thank you. Mr. Crowders. <clears throat> so in, in listening to the, all the board's uh, recommendations and words of wisdom, one of the things that, I, that sort of comes to my mind in um, this potential transaction is, is, so we have a master plan that we're kind of looking at and talking about right now. Um, what I would offer is let's look at the master plan, as Mr. Greg sort of alluded to. Let's look at the master plan and m make sure that um, there might not be any potential use for that land long term according to the master plan that we're actually looking at right now, that, that three, five, seven, eight year, okay. number one. Number two, uh, I agree with this. I agree with the, uh, the the spending of the money. If we're gonna if we're gonna make money off of this, which it sounds like we will, um, if we don't have one, what I would recommend is the board or the um, you know the the office setting up a spending priority list. You know, when you get these extra monies that coming in that come in, set up a spending priority list of needs. Okay. What, what are some major needs and what are these schools? And then when stuff like this happens, okay, you go to that priority list and you say, okay, we got, we got an extra 50,000. We got, you know, an extra 100,000. Let's look at this priority list and, and, and work that priority list. Just some recommendations. Thank you. Good. Yeah, I remembered my question. Okay, Mr. The one I <laughs> forgot earlier. Thank you, Mr. Ford. You helped me remember it. It's uh, how much of that, piece of five acres is actually the pit and how much of it yeah in other words I'm thinking if it's, there's a slither of it that's close enough to our property that we can not sell the whole thing and maybe he keep a slither of it for future use we don't want the hole in the ground he wants the hole in the ground so I think all that's above the pit is like a little head in there like a so it's the whole I, you know, I'm going to do my due diligence, and I'm going to go see that piece of property for myself, you know. Yeah. Don't fall in the water, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go see that uh, this weekend and uh, decide for myself that it's something that we need to sell. Yeah. Okay, I think I did go to public, right? All right, good. I went to public? Okay, public comments on that. All right, so then, yeah, I think I did, because I did, you two guys. You, you did. You have something else? No? Okay, so as far as the committee, are we up? Um, Sam, one, one more statement. Yes, sir. Um, is it, I, I'm just, like I say, I, I'm gonna probably look at, look at it myself, but I'm not gonna ride with you, okay? Yeah. Ride myself. <laughs> Yeah, make sure I don't fall in that hole because Roger's going to come fill it up, and fill it up <laughs> real fast. All right. um, is that, I mean, I guess my question is, is this something that has to be done tonight? Or it could be something that we could, you know, because like I said, I would like to get at least a better, honestly, I'm not opposed to it. It's just yeah, that. Yeah, there's no, we're not pressed for time. It, 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 it falls in our court. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I don't know if everybody else is comfortable going with it tonight. I, I, I'm kind of not, but I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Okay. You, you follow what I'm saying? So, I mean, can, 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 can I make a, um, maybe a substitute motion that we you know, bring it to the next BFT? Yeah, I'd like to make a substitute motion that we bring this, this item back to the next BFT meeting. So for next month? This next month, month, right. Okay. You got that, Ms. Sandy? Next, next committee. I'll second that yeah, motion. The committee. Yeah. Seconded, Seconded by Dr. Traha. Any public comments? And just for the reason I stated. Okay. Dr. Tron, yes, any other board members? <laughs> okay. So uh, motion passes to table it till next committee meeting in December. Good. Okay. So the, I, I said it the wrong, the wrong verbiage is what you're saying, table. We're putting well, it on the next, the next committee. Bring it to the next meeting. Okay. Okay, all right, so remove table. <laughs> We're putting it on the next committee meeting. However, because it is a committee of two thirds, it's what you need to pass anyway. So it's a two thirds vote. Right. 
Okay. We're done with this one? <laughs> Good. All right, number 12, we're going to get to the um, project managers. Mr. Ryan Smith. You don't look like Mr. Ryan Smith. No, I apologize. Mr. Ryan Smith had a bout of COVID. Uh -oh. Hit him kind of hard. So he is, uh, I think, starting to see the light. So we got the other guy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Marco. I haven't heard that in a while. I know. <clears throat> All right, good evening, everybody. It's good to see you all again this month. Um, we'll try to keep our update a little brief because I know we've all been here for a very long time. Appreciate it. And uh, I think some of the staff has already been poking at me to move it on. So um, I will begin with this. That's not what I want to begin with, actually. That's so much paper here. <clears throat> okay. So I believe in your packets you have a three-page staple deal. Probably starts with this page, which is what's up on the on the screen right now. And you all saw a copy of this last week for those. I mean, last month for those that you're at the building committee, and it's just it's giving you a very quick update per project, who the architect is, what the next milestone is. You'll see a majority of those say substantial completion. I'm going to go through the projects a little bit more in depth on some of them with you, so you don't have to worry too much about that. The other part is we kind of went through and updated some of the construction costs and architect costs as we've been moving through. I know last month there were some questions over a couple of uh, pretty high numbers uh, on some of them, so we went through and did that. I also added an estimated budget line, so you all don't have to do the math of the construction and design. It's already there for you. Uh, but Again, I like to put that on there, let you have a feel for how much money is being spent at each one of your campuses uh, now, because I think it's good to know when you're out talking to your folks and stuff, you know, how much is going on at Katie and how much is going at, at Berg or whatever. You know, you have a, a dollar amount tends to help out a whole lot. So um, I flip through to the next page, which is the bar chart of the schedule. That's provided for you to go through. I'm going to go through it in a bit, little bit different manner instead of going through the bar chart. But again, what we're going to go through is a, quite a few projects that by January 4th of 2024 are going to be completed or we're expecting to be substantially complete. And then I'm going to go through with the ones that are going to be going past that. So as I said, I am kind of jumping through them a little bit. So I'm going to go to this sheet right now, which is a, should be the third one in your packet. Okay. Uh, I won't go through the completed projects. Uh, there's really no difference there from what we had uh, last, last month. Uh, those projects total right up to a little over $9 million worth of work that have been completed to date. Uh, the projects on the construction, there's quite a few of them there. They're in the blue column. I'm going to separate them out by the ones that are going to be completing in January 4th. The reason I say January 4th is because we have one that goes just a little over into 2024 and all the rest on the list that I'm going to talk about are finished in 2023. So I'm, I'm including that one. So that's uh, Coto Valley Blue, East Homa, Legion Park, Village East, Berg uh, Elementary, West Park, Caldwell Middle, and Gibson School. Those... Uh, we are anticipating substantial completion, like I said, by, Jan by January 4th of this year. They total roughly around a little over $4.5 million worth of work. And then that leads us into what's going on in 2024 going forward. So of those, I'll speak a little bit, a little bit more detail on them. Not, I won't give you a whole, whole bunch on them, but uh, Acadian Elementary, I think y'all have been hearing about that one the last couple of months because it's been a multi-phase project. I think two months ago, Ryan put up a, a floor plan showing you all the different phases. So right now, uh, work on phase 4A has begun. Uh, and through all the different phases and stuff, we're anticipating that project going into the end of March of 2024 to be fully complete. The next one would be Homa Junior High. Roof repair package has been completed. The interior package, the construction uh, notice to proceed for the for the contractor just went out earlier part of this month. I think it was on the sixth of this month. Um, so that'll be going, and substantial completion is expected by the end of May of 2024. 
Mulberry Elementary construction uh, is in progress. It's substantial completion on that one. We're looking at uh, early April of 2024. Then you've got Andrew Price. That one notice proceed went out on the 13th of this month, which was yesterday. <coughs> so substantial completion looking at the end of March of 2024. So there's not a whole lot to tell you about those other than they're getting started and they're in kind of a completion date. And then Terrebonne High School, again, another notice proceed went out earlier this month. So we had quite a few that were kind of bam, 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 uh, starting up this month with a substantial completion of May of 24. So of those projects there, you could see we've got five, five of them that are gonna be uh, completing co going in. And I think last month I explained to y'all our goal is to get them all through and get them all finished before school starts. And most of them will be sometime in the spring, but some may linger a little bit into the summer. Then we have a uh, upper, upper Little Caillou demo package, uh, which notice, notice proceed for that work will be going out this week so we can get started on that. And then Honduras Elementary, there's a notice proceed expected to be going out for that one on the 28th of this month. So we have two of them that will have notice of proceeds coming out. So we'll probably, I think I counted five notice proceeds going out this month to get work started. So obviously those projects will be going on into the, into the new year. The total uh, for the projects that, we've, that I just talked about, which are seven of them, other than the Upper Little Caillou demo, because I didn't have the breakout number just for that. I had a lump for all of the Upper Little Caillou. It's, it's about $9.8 million worth of work. So um, just kind of giving it to you both on a, on a financial amount and total quantity of, of projects going out forward. So uh, the, then that would leave the only projects after that. We should have Acadian Modular going out for bid. Um, Elysian Fields and Elysian Fields should be bidding this week and Evergreen Junior Phase 2 has a pre-bid this week and it'll be bidding at the end of this month on the 30th. So we have three of those that'll be going out for bid this month, uh, which about five, five point one, five point two million $5.1, $5.2 million dollars worth of work. So, uh, And then that leaves Ellender, which is on hold right now, just through what, uh, still awaiting FEMA. Uh, and then Upper Little Caillou Design, we are awaiting to hear numbers uh, on uh, enrollment counts with your attendance zones and stuff, kind of shifting a little bit there, so, so we can get started with design on those projects. Any, I just went through a lot, I know, so I'm happy to answer any questions as best as I can with Ryan, not here, but Paul can answer as well. So, Mr. Harding, anything? Mr. Harding? Dr. Trump. I'm just hearing a lot of places we could put that money if we sell that lot of land. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of places we could use that money. So when we look at this sheet here, yes, sir. the bottom numbers, these are all projected costs for everything being done. Is that what we're looking at if we, we add all that up or am I totally on a different ball field? Uh, yes, sir. So if you add all the construction, it's just to be a summation of all what the construction costs are for those, the architect costs, and then the total cost. So we're looking Keep at in mind that that does include an estimated amount for Ellender. I'm not really sure where even Ellender lies right now. So what we have is what Ryan had as the last kind of number, but we've also got a couple different renditions of it. So, but keep in mind when you're looking at 67 million, that does include 34 million dollars in there for Ellender. That's that's a use point. And you'll be happy to know that I did cut. Uh, the architect's fee on that from 200 something million. So we got okay. it down to 2.9. So we're looking at total around 150 million just for these. Uh, add at, those well, the numbers. estimated budget, no, you don't add them across. The estimated budget line, which is your architect and construction, is 76 million. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. So, about to say, oh, Jesus. Good. That's the bank, right? Okay. Yeah, sure. No problem. <laughs> well, keep, keep in mind again, yeah, rough, almost half of that is Ellender. Yeah. And it does include Upper Little Caillou for the future, what the estimated amount is for the future work as well. Okay. I feel better. Yes, sir. All right. That's why the numbers I told you, if you're sitting there adding what I just told you, does not come anywhere near $76 million. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. It's because I, those two projects are, I did not include into my numbers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dehart. I'm a little confused. Yes, sir. Bear with me. Yes, sir. Okay. You're, you're on the first. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, 
the major the majority of those that are under construction it is the contract amount for the for the contractors now which you may have a number for say Acadian Elementary or, or some of these that had a roofing project that had a had, has an interior pack we clumped them together we didn't separate them out of this this sheet would not be kind of long but those come from that if we do not have a, a job out for bid yet or has it bid it is an estimate number let's go back to Elena High School yes sir That is correct. 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 So right now, this is just a projection of health. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, go to the last sheet. Yes, sir. And I do appreciate you giving us a tentative date or estimated date to get jobs done. Mm -hmm. But I would ask you in the future, you know how you went through very thoroughly? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to finish. I forgot the first one you said about what date. Don't worry, I don't want you to repeat it. No, no, I don't have to repeat it, but they're on this sheet. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's what I was saying. I, what, I had the column there, and I was just going to go through it on the other one. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. exactly. Go back to it and look at it, and that's why these sheets are very informative. It's all questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're trying to give you as much information as you can because you all have a tough job of being able to answer when you don't have. The... Yes, sir. I admit I was lost. I, I go pretty quick sometimes. It, I'm it's sorry. a lot of numbers. Well, it's yeah. a good, uh, presentation, but like Thank I say, you. it's hard to it's easy to get confused with all that. Said, mm -hmm. But I never heard you say I went to the second sheet for that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you looking at your iPad. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Ford. <clears throat> two questions. First, Evergreen Junior High Phase Two. What does that include? Is is the gymnasium in that? Of the entire school, does that include the gymnasium, the ceiling tiles, and the gymnasium? I don't know. I got okay. Uh, the second question is just for the record to to make sure everyone's clear. Uh, the project managers, there's a percentage that FEMA reimburses us, correct? Do you know what that percentage is? It's up to. Well, in our, in our contract, it's up to four percent. To four percent. No, no, no. Project. project managers. Project managers up to 4% of the project cost. No, I'm saying what does FEMA reimburse us for? Oh, total for everything? For, no, oh. for project managers. When we pay you guys, oh, they that's pay, what I'm looking 90 for. Oh, they pay 90% and 10% is paid by y'all. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know sure. you, how it was determined or what the overall amount. No, no yeah. They, they, not, <laughs> they pay your FEMA consultant 100%, and I think y'all went over that ad nauseum last month. This we do ninety percent and ten percent pay, which is basically all the like all your project costs. Exactly. I just want to make it clear for everyone. So, you guys are able to bill up to four percent of each project. We pay hundred percent. We get reimbursed ninety percent of what we of what you charge us. So essentially, we are paying 04 percent of every project to keep you guys on board. Don't check the math. It's right. I promise. Okay. I know not to question your math. Yeah, I just want to make sure because there's some speculation, um, and and we really like myself. I'm evaluating the value of you guys, HGI, and, mm -hmm. and anybody else that's working on this project. And you know, just being upfront and honest, that's what I have to consider. You know, yes, I'm sir. looking at is it worth the 0.4 percent we're spending? You know, and that's the question I have to ask myself. So I like that you guys are coming with all this information. It is a lot, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I just want to make sure the public is aware too, so that way they're not calling us saying you need to get rid of these guys, or, you know, I want to make sure they understand where the value lies as well. Yes, sir. Thank you. Another way of looking at it, Mr. Ford, is if 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 we bill ten dollars, not one dollar, you have to pay nine dollars gets reimbursed by FEMA. To make it simple, ninety ten. Yep. Any Good other question. board members? Okay, thank you, Mr. Marcus. Thank you. Appreciate Mr. Hart, you're in our prayers, sir. <laughs> I can't get uh, Number 13, matter bearing upon Hurricane Ida response. Uh, Mr. Curtis Lee. Can get that? Good evening and good to see you guys again as well. I'm going to get connected oh, real quickly. It's 
energia. Okay, um, good evening again. Tonight, um, kind of in the same format, I'm going to discuss our schools as well. You guys will have your packet in front of you. And um, in our packet, we have uh, on the first sheet broken out as we did um, the previous month or so by elementary, middle, high school, what we're referring to as our specialty schools, which would be the technical schools, and of course, SEC. And then um, we have uh, the administrative facilities in that ranking order. And so uh, in the status columns, you guys will be able to read uh, some comments and look at the schools in your respective districts so you can know uh, what we're reporting on for this month of November with the changes in the last 30 days. Uh, on the second page, it is our version of the schedule, uh, and we've broken the schedule out based off of calendar year with a uh, high-level snapshot per quarter, and we've given you start and anticipated completion dates or actual contract completion dates for those schools that are under con construction and under contract, and I'll talk more about that in detail in a few minutes. With that being said, um, you know, we were initially assigned 22 facilities. Of those 22 facilities, we have two of them that's on that document that you guys elected not to do anything with. So we're going to be speaking about the ones that are um, going, to, going to have some level of hurricane repairs. Um, and under active construction as, as of right now, we're reporting three elementary schools, which is Broadmoor, Dularge, and Montague, one middle school, which is Montague, and two high schools, HL Bourgeois and South Terrebonne High School. Um, under contract and next to go to construction is uh, four elementary schools, which is Lisa Park, Grand Caillou, Oakshire, and Shriver. Um, under the middle schools that are under contract, that's Oaklawn Middle. And um, the next one for high school is South Terrebonne. Now, we mentioned South Terrebonne High as being actively under construction. So the active construction for South Terrebonne High right now is currently the new spectator gym. But under contract is the remaining facilities by that same contractor, which you guys awarded and signed that contract. And so they have uh, already been on site, but they are mobilizing the new materials for the facilities and getting ready to ramp up the construction for the main educational buildings. Um, with that being said, these schools that are under contract will be starting construction within the next 45 to 60 days. And so we'll have those by uh, January and um, some of them may be even before that actively doing work because we have contractors that have ordered materials such as roofing from the suppliers that are you know underway and submittals and schedules that are being su submitted to the the architects and under review um and and in most cases i think we've already received our building permits uh, the next schools that will be completed that are actively under construction will be uh, Broadmoor, Dulage, and Montague Elementary, and then the Montague Middle Schools. And those schools will all be finished by, they're projected to be finished by or possibly before the end of January 2024. So those are the next ones that will we'll be uh, moving into substantial completion and, and ready for full occupancy of those uh, classrooms after um, any punch list. Uh, need to be performed. 
uh, currently under design. Um, we had the Fletcher facility. That design was 100% complete, but there were some, um, some revisions to the front office and the administrative areas that uh, the architect has been asked to take into consideration. And so those portions are being revised now. We'll go back through a review of those areas and um, those particular options will be um, an owner upgrade. And so we'll separate and track that separately from the hurricane repair, but that was under request by you guys uh, with the school board. Um, Lewis Miller uh, and SEC Cottages are following right behind that um, where we've completed the 60% design uh, just a week ago. We've completed our review on that and we're moving into the next phases so that we can get those ready uh, for our 100% design and uh, out to bid. And so with that being said, we're currently, I apologize, my screen's off. We're currently, uh, we're managing, HGI is managing um, with today's Grand Caillou um, demolition that uh, architect Merlin spoke about. We're at around $40 million of um, work that is under contract and slash actively under construction. <coughs> and that work, um, especially with the magnitude of the high schools, is uh, going to put us well into, as you'll see on this sheet, um, into the year 2025 based off of the complexity and the amount of work there is on some of the high schools and the, and the larger facilities. And that doesn't include any design and new construction of the Grand Caillou Elementary and the alternative buildings because we haven't started that design yet to see what the reconstruction will be. Uh, I just <clears throat> wanted some clarification on Oakland. Sure. If I'm reading this correctly, uh, pre-construction meeting scheduled for this coming week to begin roof and exterior repairs. Yes. And then the interior repair package, bid opening is on November 30th. Yes. So we move along with Oak Lawn. And here on the other sheet, it says that we expected completion by March of 24. Is that roof, interior, that's, and exterior? That's the roof work. That's, that's the roof work? That's the exterior work. Okay, yes, because I'm thinking that would be a little bit much to have it all done by right. that date. That's what I wanted to make sure I was understanding. Thank right. you. This Thursday, we actually have um, the... Um, pre-bid meeting, which is typical between the first and second announcement, but before the third announcement where the architect will call a pre-bid meeting and uh, we'll all be on site. So that's this Thursday at Oakland in order to achieve uh, that bid at the 30th. And that gives us an opportunity to get feedback from the contractors who've been reviewing the plans in case there's anything that they need to clarify out in the field before they submit the final bid. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Crowdus. <clears throat> yes, sir. Um, on the Lisa Park Elementary, uh, in the status, you have that uh, Freetown has requested clarification from DDG as the mechanical drawings do not match what is existing. Can you yes, uh, elaborate on that a little bit and, yes, and how did that take place? Yes, sir. Very good question. So that work is um, uh, been awarded to Freetown. There is some mechanical uh, air conditioning units, rather, that need to be uh, repaired <coughs> on that particular project. Um, there has been some changes that was made at the school that was not reflected on the drawings. So the contractor was just putting in uh, a request for clarification and information on what he's finding in the field versus what was actually in the plans so that they can uh, get that scope uh, more clearly defined before they move forward. And so we've had some ongoing discussions between the contractor and the architect on that just as uh, late as on yesterday, and they're working to move forward. Okay. There is other work that can take place on those contracts, so that is not impeding okay, that was the progress next... of the other work or right. holding up the entire contract. Okay. That was my next question is can you do something else while you're working on this? Yes, sir. Very okay. good question. All right. Thank you. Mr. DeHart. Diana, just a curiosity question. You have school for exceptional children and the second chief cottages. And over here 
That's correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good question, and I appreciate that, Mr. Dehar. Um, and no, no disrespect taken by that. Um, let me start with what I recall that you first asked. So, um, with this FEMA process, the architects are in charge of 100% of their design. They are the licensed legal professional by the state to do the design work. Once that architect that's assigned to that particular school completes that design, um, ourselves, both project managers, but in this case, those schools that are assigned to us, we uh, go in and we do a review of their design at certain milestones. And that review is for the project managers to take a look at the original damage assessments that were submitted to FEMA and check that against the construction drawings at 30, 60, 90, 100% to make sure that that scope of work is only the hurricane repair or if it's owner upgrades that you guys asked about so that we're just another set of eyes or a double check on behalf of the architect. And All South also does the same thing after us. So all, all three, project manager, FEMA consultant, and the architect are involved with we don't design, but we review and check the design and we provide any comments that we have. And we also often have consultations with those architects to make sure we understand their design throughout that process mm -hmm. because we're overseeing the construction to make sure we know throughout the design what the contractor is supposed to be doing. So that those comments, and I may be able to clean that wording up, that's, that's what that is meaning when you see those uh, construction drawing design reviews at certain percentages.
All south. All south. Yes, sir. No, that's okay. Our contract is up January 4th of 2024. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other board members? All right, Mr. Curtis Lee, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Okay. You were done? Uh, no, you I'm, I'm here for any questions. No. I don't have anybody any else. Any other questions from the board members? All right, thank you, Sam. One, one question. Yes. I don't know. I, I stepped out. I was looking on Mr. Curtis, and you got South Turbon High School. It must, I think somebody talked about that earlier. That was the gym. What did you say, 60% completed? Yes, sir. Oh, did you okay, and so when you say 60% completed, that's more the outside and now the, the remodeling part is like the floors, the light fixtures and... So so inside, the the exterior of the gym, gym that's is That's the auxiliary gym, right? Right, that's, that's the new spectator gym. So in the back corner... That's what we always call the new gym. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Yes, sir. And so on the outside, all of the roof has been completed, all the brickwork and the building envelope has been sealed. On the interior, uh, included in that 60%, all of your mechanical equipment has been installed and they're getting ready to bring those things online. All your electrical has been rewired and your panels have been replaced. Uh, they've been working on rebuilding the decks for the bleachers and all that work is completed. Uh, they've scraped all of the metal and structural trusses and gotten ready to recoat those for the, the holding up of the roof system. So that 60% work is, is including the interior of that spectator gym. Okay. Do I, I know we had some discussion uh, earlier but, but between uh, talking about South Turbone Gym and also Ellington Gym. Uh, of course, I didn't hear anything on Ellington Gym earlier. I know I can't go back and, and revisit that. But do you have uh, any idea of when that gym will be completed? Or so far in reference to uh, the students can actually start using that facility for PE or volleyball games or whatever? Uh, yes, sir, for our um Yeah, South Turbon, right. The new gym is projected to be done January twenty twenty five. The auxiliary gym? Yeah. Yes. That's that's what's projected. So so we have so, But I'm saying you said you're sixty percent finished. So we oh, have I about said twenty five seventy, 70 days left yeah. in that construction. They told us that in September it would be done by yeah. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So, okay. Yeah, 24. I'm sorry. Oh, 24. yeah, I'm looking. I'm saying that's an auxiliary gym. I mean, only got 40% left. It's going to take two years to get it done. <laughs> okay. So, sorry, okay. All right. And so, basically, that, that's your projection yes, date. Sir. That second line, if, if that may be the confusion for South Terrebonne High, it should show an that's AB for those. Right. The second right. line is the facilities, and that's the schedule that carries out into 2025 yeah, because field. we have yeah. not started that work yet and that's that's the the rebuilding of all of the educational buildings and right the re remaining facilities Ms. Sozer do we come up with a plan yet on, on the main uh, uh gym uh you're talking about the gym that's attached to the school yeah that's included in that's included in that okay all right and, I'm, and I'm just trying to get a better grasp I need to go right out there and look at that school Yes, sir. I haven't seen an architect drawing of nothing. We have construction drawings. We, don't, we didn't have to do a new rendering or design to the facade. And I want to speak on behalf of that. The architect is here. Do we have any? Yeah. For any school or any projects, I haven't seen an architect drawing. And we done paid millions in architect fees. I haven't seen anything. Yep. Me neither. Look at some type of drawing to have an idea. I'm, I know it's not on you, you know. Well, I, you know, if forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn, uh, and 
Mr. Merlin may want to come up, but the work that we were doing on these are again hurricane repairs. So when you're going in, of course, all of the architects have had to give drawings and details on the roof and any exterior uh, building envelopes that were breached due to the storm. And then everything else is just general repairs and replacements for what got exposed and damaged to the hurricane. So it may be um, a little bit different than what you guys are perceiving in a rendering or elevation because we didn't have to do those changes on the schools we're repairing. You guys should receive those types of drawings you're talking about on all the schools that have to be rebuilt. So for demolition, the schools that we're gonna be completely redesigning, if I'm saying that correctly, those, those will have full renderings. All right, so Dr. Tron, you had a question. Mm -hmm. What'd you ask about money? No? Any, okay, Mr. Hamner, you're next. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Um, I, I just want to thank Mr. Lagarde for asking the question I've been asking the architects to do for several months now. Bring us a picture of something that, so we can see what we're building. I've asked it, been told I'm gonna get it. Haven't seen one yet either, Mike. Thank you for bringing it up. You spent a lot of money. It is not on you. You know, we got all these people we paid. And this is Damn. Yes, sir. I mean, here I am. I'm again saying that I said, said this once before about the contractors we had. I mean, if we are paying these guys and we are their boss. And it's just like, uh, you know, uh, we are your boss, technically, Ms. Orton. If I ask for something, you're going to give it to us. So I feel the same thing with these architects. If we ask for drawings, we would need a drawing. That's not hard. It's not hard to do. The architects, that's the, they're professionals. I can't draw ink pen. But these guys are professionals at what they're doing. So if board members are asking for, for this, so we can see exactly, just like the same thing we were talking about, that, that piece of property. I couldn't, imagine, I couldn't visualize it. But if I got something in front of me, I can visualize what somebody's talking about. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to put this, or we're going to put this on you. I mean, if the board is asking for something, I mean, if you want something, talk to Mr. Ogeron, and he should, he should get it for you. Any board member should get it for all of us. Not trying to throw you out there. I'm just, I'm just being real. But these guys are getting paid. So if, if we if we paying them, then they should be doing or uh, doing what we ask them to do. And, and I mean, since, since he can't, can I, can I just touch can, on what Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Hammond. Go ahead. You know, or you want to go ahead of me again, Mr. <laughs> Look, and I wasn't pointing mm -hmm. fingers at the superintendent. You know, you can go in his office and see the pictures. But, you know, when you, we uh, meet as a board here, we all have to see and know what we're talking about the same thing. And uh, it would be nice. You know, some of them are there, I think, on the wall. But some, you know, I'd like to have everybody see the same thing. That's what I'm referring to. Yeah. Thank you, for Eric, for, uh, for those comments. Though. I uh, appreciate the backup on that. Mr. Lagarde. Yeah, and it, it's not on you, Mr. Lee. But you're right. I, I would like to see drawings. I remember. When we hired all these, we, we looked like we got everybody on the payroll. And all these companies came in, they had all these experts on their team. You know, these people put teams together and they came in with their people, you know, that they group. I thought we was hiring one group and they was going to get the work. But then we got, when y'all came in, we had these people on board already. We had all these other people on board. I thought the project managers was going to come in and help us with, with all that. But... Apparently, they had people that should be answering to y'all. Y'all answering to them what I'm hearing. That was, I wanted to get rid of that good old boy network, but apparently, it's still here. All these people got these contracts, and and I know where the board trying to, some people trying to go with it, you know, and if I don't have anything to go, we're not going to go down that road to get rid of people and give that good old boy them, back them contracts and go back to the same thing. What? I came here, we're trying to get away from. 
you know, and, and all these people is on the payroll. You know, we have so many people we pay, oh, we got this for FEMA, we got this, this one a FEMA expert. No, anybody called FEMA and got what FEMA wanted and know what they're doing is an expert. Not just knowing one person from no one company is an expert dealing with FEMA. Because every company came here and presented to us had FEMA experts on this staff. That was a part of the package. Every company came and presented, they had this on this staff, they had this, and we thought that's why we picked them, because they can do the job. But but now we got so many people on the payroll and so many people we paying and you know, you're looking at this and you know at first now people thinking, Oh, we got this under control, we don't need this, we don't need that. That is not true. That is not true. And like you say, I wanna visualize and see what we doing. You know, we we, we doing this, we doing that. Everybody was going to bring us pictures. If we paint a dough, we're going to bring y'all a picture. You know, if, if we hang a picture, we're going to let y'all see what we're doing. We don't see nothing. One guy came in here, had a good idea. He had a drone system. We was like, oh, yeah, we like that. He's like, man, I'm going to take pictures of everything I do. This young guy, we was like, oh, man, we like that. Then we asked all kinds of other companies, hey, y'all can take pictures. Maybe can y'all get with that guy? And everybody's like, yeah, we're going to put it on the website. Everything we do, we're going to show y'all what we're doing. And we don't see that from nobody. You know, it was like, yeah, we just say, if you're going to paint a dough blue, we're going to show you. Oh, yeah, we're going to show it to you. We don't see nothing. And to be frankly, constituents was calling me now. They may not see the work, but we hear numbers, but they still don't see nothing. They drive by these schools, hey, when this going to happen? When that going to happen? I don't know. You know, that's, that's what I tell them. I guess people want to see finished projects. You know, I, I done built a lot of stuff, but I had contractor and they did the job, but you got so many people doing so many things and so many people getting paid. You know, I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we might need an investigation on all this because something's not right. I could be wrong, but we, we got so many hands in the cookie jar. I don't know. So I've heard. It's not on you, Mr. Yes, sir. I'm no, just being, no, don't take it personal. It's not on your company, you know. But I thought it'll have two companies I would ask and say, and they would tell us there. We got all these people, you know. Apparently, maybe I thought I was wrong in the process when, when we hired two project managers. They would come to us, not all these other people and all these other things. They would talk to us. But maybe I'm wrong. Yes, sir. Not against you, your comments, sir. Don't take it that way. No, no, I'm not. I, I've heard what the board has said here, and I appreciate this dialogue. And trust me, everybody's comments that that spoke up about this particular matter, you know, I'm taking it under advisement and consideration. Uh, I do know um, for myself, our, our company, the other project manager, when we go out on a weekly and monthly basis, we are taking pictures and videos and I even have some drone footage from certain facilities because we have to do that in order to uh, verify stuff from month to month when we are approving pay apps of contractors which is just part of the process and the documentation so from a picture standpoint I think more of our thinking was we would give um, you know a massive change of a before and after and on some of these projects that have a longer duration, you could really see the difference from what it was, which you guys have seen when the hurricane hit to where the final repairs are. And that has not come up yet. But if you all want to see progress pictures of a bunch of construction, we have that at each facility that we can provide if you guys want to see that for next month. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're finished? Yeah. I have Mr. DeHart next. First reality that 
Mr. Ford. I know that I was very clear before we hired either one of these project managers that I wanted not just drawings but photos and put on our website for people, the public, to be able to see it. I think that's what we're trying to convey to everyone is when we get called by a constituent or someone asks us and when they see us out in public, we need to have some sort of visual idea of what we're looking at or what we're going to be dealing with. Now, I do want to correct. We have seen one drawing that was on Legion Park when we were talking about replacing the windows that were already there and doing that outside work. That's the one drawing we've seen. So I do want to encourage or I don't want to say encourage, maybe just request that we have these drawings but even made electronic so they're on our website so we can direct people to say, hey, you want to see the progress? take a look at our website, it's on there. Um, <clears throat> and that is important to not just to us, but to our constituents. And that is something we're evaluating. But I also want to make a couple of things clear as well that we, we keep forgetting. So our project managers, they get up to 4% of the contract. We pay 10%, well, we pay 100% of their fees and then FEMA reimburses us for 90%, right? So we end up paying 10%. However, when it comes to Adam and those guys at All South, FEMA reimburses us 100% on their fees because they are an inter intermediary, right? They are the mediator between our project managers and our school district and FEMA. They are a required uh, element in this whole process. I've said before, I know they came to us to try to be project managers at first. They put in a bid, they vied for that. We didn't choose them. I'm grateful we didn't choose them because I think we've got the best people in place to be those FEMA intermediates, right? Now, that needs to, you need to keep remembering that because everyone seems to bring up those guys as if they're costing us money. They're not costing us a thing. We're getting reimbursed 100% for All South. So I'm thankful that they're on board with this as the FEMA go-to guy and not necessarily as project managers. Having said that, I'm not completely satisfied with all the project managers as a whole, and I think the board is sort of in the same position. So we're gonna, we're gonna come together and we're gonna talk about what's in the best interest of our district, and that's what we're gonna have to decide between now and January 4th. This isn't anything personal against you guys, it's just this is very complex, a lot more complex than we thought it was going to be. When we had everyone up here vying for these opportunities, you know, we had some young guys that had never did this before. We had some older guys that had done this before, and they were well versed in it. But it was a lot more involved than we thought it would be. So that's what we need to consider because although we're paying you guys a good chunk of change, can we really do? this ourselves that's the question we have to ask and we have to see the value in what you guys bring so may I make a final I do comment? want to see some more some more drawings though yes thank yes you. sir so just as you guys deliberate and make this decision in the next few weeks to months keep in mind between the two of us we currently have a hundred million dollars worth of work they have a staff of five people I believe we have a staff of four there are two members that you guys haven't seen um, some of these packages with some of the contractors where you get into our area of expertise is actually managing the construction, which we're just now getting deep into. And we have a lot more construction management to do. We're not FEMA experts at all, but individually and as a company, we are construction managers and we have very strong working relationships and a lot of knowledge that's not in these spreadsheets and not on the plans with the intricate details of the schools, the issues you guys are gonna have with the contractors, the things that we're gonna run into with the plans and the code, that that stuff will not translate as easy in these meetings that we fall on to manage that process. There are some very good contractors. We've pointed those people out. There are some not so good contractors that work and tax us a lot and it is our job to work with those contractors to still keep 
as the owner representative during construction, these jobs moving within that time frame because we have those relationships as well with those principals and those teachers and understanding the needs that we cannot extend time. Time is equivalent to money as well just because we have a bad performer. So our area works very deeply in making sure we keep the construction moving. We don't have a lot to do with getting it to construction, but once it does, that's our area that we perform. We have a 4% cap. Of yes. that 4 million, as a board, we are responsible for 10%. That's 400,000, okay? So that's just giving you guys some numbers to think about. That's two years, 400,000. <clears> we are responsible basically for that portion. Now, government contracts, jobs like this, after natural disasters, you have a lot of corporate baggers that come into town and try to get some of that saying that's what you guys are doing because I really don't think you are, but that's what we're leery of, and we have to stay cognizant of that. We don't want corporate baggers coming in, getting a part of the work, getting a piece of the action, and then rolling out and leaving those clients up. That's what we have to be concerned with, so I think that's where we're at today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boy, we, we fully, I mean, at least, I, the only person that wasn't up here that made these decisions was Mr. Crowder. I think the board understood, we all have common sense, we're all educated up here, we all understand how business go. Me as a whole, I understand how the process go. Thank you, Mr. Ford, I totally understand that. But, I mean, we are paying for a service and it's 4%. We know that. So it's, it's no big secret that that's what, we, that's what we're getting. So it shouldn't be that we're paying you 4% now when we knew at the beginning what we was paying you. So I, I'm just trying to figure out, I'm trying to understand that why we, no disrespect, Mr. Ford, I'm just saying, why are we harping on that when I think each of us knew that already? Who didn't know it? Who didn't know it? I think that's the question I need to ask. We all knew this. So we should even be having this conversation about what we're paying you. What we should be, the conversation we should be having is that are you doing or affect the job to earn that 4%? That's what needs to be in question, not what we're paying you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Harding, for explaining that. Ms. Benoit, Thank finally you. your turn. Thank you. <laughs> um, so just so that I understand what I think you were saying earlier about the renditions of the work, um, most of the work that's being done is repair. And the, the only renditions that we should really be seeing are the ones that are relatively new construction. Because I would think that the other pictures would be like what the architects are, might do is wiring. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Like in, inner workings of the building, which would mean nothing to us. And visually, would mean nothing to our constituents. So am I understanding that right? Yes, ma'am, that's how I was explaining it. So if we have a building that we're gonna demo and we have to rebuild on that site or on a new site, you'll get a full rendition of a, a total complete set of uh, plans. Right. Um, in the cases with the hurricane repairs for uh, existing conditions, we can only fix back, obviously we've said it a thousand times, what was damaged by the storm. So there's more, there, there is some drawings, but there's more construction notes and specific details on uh, redesigning of roofs because all of them had roof damage. So the architects had to redesign roofs that had a lot of detail to it. And then beyond that, everything that the roof breach got wet. So insulation, ceiling tiles, walls, paint, flooring, those are the kind of things that are consistently in the drawings. I think the ones where you guys had 
a rendition on the exterior was where we had a lot of window damage. Right. And of course, you guys wanted to see what the new visual. windows would look we like. We could see that, but right. I, I, I think that's what I wanted the board to, if I understood it right, I wanted the board to know that we can't see pictures of everything and know what's going on by those pictures. And we don't need that. Redesigns. Right. We just need to see the redesigns. And, and I would suggest that on those, we could put that on the screen in here and see it while we're in a meeting if we have that. Um, our board, I mean, I know you have a board in your office of, of um, one of the schools, but that's what I was trying to get straight, that we don't need, you know, wiring and pictures of AC walls systems inside. And stuff. That's not yeah. going to mean a thing. Okay. It's just the, the few that are being redesigned. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Ogeron. Excuse me. Mr. LaGuardia, you, we, we can get you those things. You, you can get them. But I agree with what you're saying. I don't think it's going to, for me, I wouldn't want to see that. But you can, I'll get them for you. So, so. To, yes, sir. It's, it's. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Go ahead. When you build a house, you get all of it. You get the electrical, you get the plumbing. Get that now. Somebody, my wife just said, "Oh, I don't know what that is, but then she go." I said, "You don't need to see that. I'm paid for it. I want to see it. What you do? You understand it? No, but you want to see it. So we'll we'll, we'll get it. I want to see it. Now she may not understand what this is, but I do. But maybe because I got a degree in engineering from Louisiana Tech, maybe that's why I may understand it. But if I don't, I still want to see it." We yes, should sir. have the ability to see it, just like we about to say we're going to take, now this is something, we about to eliminate some position, and we about to say, okay, we're going to get uncertified teachers out of the classroom, and we're going to put all other teachers in the classroom, so who's certified, so we're going to say, we're going to take professionals who do this, it is the point, it is the point, we're going to take professionals who do this, like you say, when they get to that part, what y'all are doing, Y'all are the professionals at it. This is what you do. So why are we going to take y'all away from basically you say y'all got $100 million worth of, that's what you do. Y'all at the part of what y'all do. Mm -hmm. So why would we feel like in two months, well, we can do that. But no, we can't because that's what we hired to. That's what y'all, y'all at the critical part. So why would we take people who professionals at this and, and get rid of them and bring in new people who say, well, you know, our people could do it. That's, that's the, the thing what we're doing on the board with. We're getting rid of, we're taking teachers and cert uncertified and certified because they are the professionals, but we're going to get rid of professionals to put new people in the spots. The same thing. Yeah, so, Ms. Benoit, so far the only, uh, like, new plans are in development. That's for South Terrebonne Middle. Grand Cay Elementary and Upper Cayu are not even like have really begun. So when that does get kind of started, we'll kind of keep you in on the basic rendition. Right. So you see like from the beginning, and we'll have some input as to kind of what it's gonna look like, and then they'll get into the further, more detailed plans eventually. But so we're, we're gonna provide that as they come. Okay. Mr. Ogeron, on our Thursday weekly update meetings, would you like for me to provide the electronic copies yes. of all of the construction yes. drawings? Okay. Yes. All right. Mr. Lee, I think you earned your 4% tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, have a good night. <laughs> Go get a drink. <laughs> All right. Number 14, matter bearing upon architect updates. Mr. Super, um, Mr. Ogeron? Mr. Superman? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd like to call, we have three architects that are here just to give further, uh, elaborate on some projects that are not necessarily mentioned in what the two project managers talked about. Um, we have Daniel, anything Daniel can talk about our safety projects, just, just and anything else. Bob, you got any pictures? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're going to have some, sir. So um, I, I had a couple of comments I could make 
for SEC, the canopy is getting put back all the way along the cottages. So the ten, there's 10 cottages on campus. Eight of the cottages are getting repaired. One of the cottages is gonna get a good overhaul because it was substantially damaged. And there's a, a 10th cottage that's got significant damage as well. But the canopy is gonna run all the way back along all the cottages on the south side of the walkway as it was before. The only canopy we're not putting back is the canopy that goes from that canopy all the way back to the main building. We're not going to build that back. Thank you. First time it rained in no, six months, but. Yeah. It's South Louisiana. So uh, the security project wrapping up. We got part two of the security project submitted in for review. So we should be getting that, that out uh, shortly, probably in the first quarter of next year. Get it out to bid. Um, I had notes. Uh, Oak Lawn Secure Lobby, we're going to follow along with everything else that's going on at Oak Lawn, and we're going to submit that probably in March to, to have that work done over the summer of 2024. Uh, and then Lewis Miller Votech, we had five buildings at Lewis Miller Votech that we're working on to try to get complete probably over the summer of 2024 as well. So when they come back to campus, they'll, they'll be ready to go. Very good. Any question, board? No, we're good. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. So Shelly's working on other projects outside of FEMA. These are the ESSER projects at Legion and Oak Lawn as well. Good evening. At Legion Park, the main focus right now is to get the new AC system up and running so the school has heat for the upcoming winter. The electrical panels have been a little bit delayed. Um, the electrical panels that actually power the, the new system will ship out Friday, should arrive November 28th. It'll take about a few days to install them and then the new system should be up and running first week of December. This Thursday, they're gonna begin installing window framing. Uh, the operable windows have been, the delivery date has been delayed. Uh, we're looking at mid-January now. Um, the substantial completion deadline for the project is February 28th. So if the windows get in on January as promised, um, I'm fully confident that BET can <clears throat> plug that in and, and, and wrap it up once those arrive. The cladding system, they would prefer if the windows were punched in and then they can finish around it. Um, yes, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry. Cosmetics. Mr. Hamner? So what's that all going to look like in the, in the, in the end? Uh, the I, exterior of Legion? Yeah, yeah, I knew what it looked like before. Uh, that was the picture you guys commented like on earlier. <laughs> Mr. Hamner, we did get pictures we did. on that. Um, yeah. Legion, uh, Legion Park had some renderings that were submitted to you guys. Um, I think it was right after we went out for bid. We all did. The whole board. Did. We, got we did get that. Yeah. Put it up on the thing up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you liked it. You liked it. And you wanted to know if the mural in the front, if the mural in the front was still going to be protected. Yes. Yes. I think, I think it's past Mr. Hammer's uh, bedtime. <laughs> yes. I know. Look, it's 8 11. Everybody's going delirious right now, right? Um, well, right now, all the flooring is, 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 is gone. We were wanting to put the new flooring in the week of Thanksgiving. However, we, we really need to push it back to Christmas because during Thanksgiving, we're going to have the mechanical subcontractor in full force to make sure that he gets uh, you know, some heat in this school the first week of December. So again, the substantial completion date is February 28th for that job. Uh, for Oak Lawn, we are going to start rocking and rolling fast. Um, we have already ordered the windows. And it appears, and I'm hoping they're not overly, you know, promising, that we will be getting the windows a lot sooner and um, possibly in d the end of December. They're going to start the demolition of the existing storefront in about a week. Um, those were also images that were submitted to you guys. Did I like I them? <laughs> you did, did like them, Mr. Hamner. Okay. You did. You did. Yes, I have. I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, that's BET, and right now we're, we're coordinating closely with the mechanical engineer who's in charge of the ESSER project. That's Dove Construction doing the mechanical work. 
And so my BET construction, my contractor and them, I mean, we're going to go ahead and try to work in the same areas at the same time to minimize school disruption. So they're going to be inside working on mechanical stuff while we're outside, you know, popping out windows and, and installing new walls. And then later in the mix, DDG's, you know, interior uh, repair work, we're sort of going to have to start kind of plugging that in and coordinating all that. So that should be interesting. Um, so the substantial completion date for this project is July 31st next year. Out of Cadian, the contractor is currently working in phase four out of five phases. So we're getting a lot done there. It's looking great. So such a good contractor. I love this contractor. Um, the fourth phase is the rear building. That's the pre-K, first grade, and library area. Their goal is to finish over the Thanksgiving break and move on to the final phase, which is the kindergarten building. Kindergarten building was the one that ended up getting the new roof. It had a lot of damage. So we're going to split that up in two phases. So they're only, getting, they're only losing half of the amount of classrooms because with kindergartners, it's hard to move them around. Um, so the current substantial completion deadline is December 31st. <clears throat> The windows, uh, the operable windows, which are the single hung windows, which are, again, those are taking forever as well to come in. It's ex they're expected to come in first week of December. Those are the ESSER projects that I was uh, gonna discuss. Which school are you talking about right there? Uh, Acadian, I was just, that's not an ESSER. I kind of just threw that in as a, a update for you. <clears throat> Did I hear you say single hung? <laughs> yeah, operable windows that, you know, slide up like a lot like in your house. For emergency egress purposes, because you don't have a sprinkler system in buildings. Thank you, Don. You want to be a project manager? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Merlin, would you like to add anything? South Carolina is a, a big project. Anything you want to add to just give any more clarification on it? Jim, it's a big I don't know. What, I, I couldn't tell what he had on his choice up there, but. Uh, the contracts for South Terrebonne for the main building were recorded yesterday. So we're planning a, a, a meeting, a pre-construction meeting to issue the notice to proceed. Contracts are applied for the billing permit. The, uh, the gymnasium is under construction, as you indicated. I mean, he's got, they're doing real well on that. Uh, the original contract date was around December 24th, uh, but we had to, the, the change order that y'all approved, I think last week, they had some days added to that. So it puts it into the, towards the end of, of January. Uh, man, the, HVAC equipment had a delay, but that started coming rolling in. The, uh, the bleachers for the uh, replacement of bleachers were actually purchased through state contract. Those are on order. Those are expected, anticipated to be ready. As soon as the floor gets in, they got to put that on top of the wooden floor. So it's going to be all coordinated with the, with the contractor. Uh, so the, as soon as we get the, the pre-construction meeting on the rest of the, the same contractors got both projects, which is, actually have been efficient. They've actually taken some, some, some of the, pro, the canopies down to have access to the gymnasium, do some of the work they were doing on that that was in the other contract. So uh, it's working out good with that. And <clears throat> I'm gonna just comment a little bit about the drawings. Like uh, Ms. Benoit said, like on South Terrebonne, we didn't do any kind of new facades, you know, anything. I mean, but all the, all the detailed work that we had to do, we had 190 something sheets of documents for the contractors to bid by. A lot of mechanical, a lot of electrical, roofing that you don't see because it's a flat roof. You know, all of all the metal panels that you see are getting, few of them are getting changed in the back where the wind direction came from, but most of them are getting repainted. So there's a lot of a lot of construction documents that are put together for the contractors to bid, you know, that really are nuts and bolts kind of things when you're doing the repair and renovations. Uh, Grand Caillou Elementary, y'all approved the bids tonight. We had 14 bidders, potential bidders that came to the pre-construction conference, or the pre-bid conference, excuse me. Uh, we had six bids turned in today. Uh, the low bid, had the two low bidders were only like 2,000 apart on the base bid, very tight bids. And uh, Mr. Ford at last meeting talked about recycling. I spoke to one of the, the low bid contractors today. He actually has a concrete recycling facility going out on 182 towards New Orleans, when you leave on New Orleans Boulevard, that big old pile of concrete, that's who got the project, the, the, the demo on Grand Cayet. So he's gonna take all of that concrete, 
impressive with his equipment, pulverize it, do whatever he does, take the steel out of it, sell the steel, recycle the concrete, all the structural steel he told me he's going to salvage that. I mean, so not much of that facility is actually going to go to the landfill. A lot of it's being recycled for, dip, not necessarily for the school board, but for, for other companies to use and things of that sort. Yeah. You know, and so <clears throat> when he finishes with that site, we have approximately 1,000 cubic yards of dirt allocated to come in, grade it out, get it in. We got to work with the FEMA consultants, you know, for the elevation final determination, which is basically 14 <laughs> foot above <coughs> zero or MSL, mean sea level. The elevation of the existing slab on the old elementary school is 5.93. We had an elevation certificate done back not long after the hurricanes to verify some things for FEMA. So the, the outside adjacent grade is about three and a half to four. So when, you, when he's finished with doing all the demo work, I think that and getting it kind of spread out, I mean, it's going to drop down a little bit. So we're going to be roughly anywhere from eight to 10 feet above existing grade by the time the finished floor elevation is established for Grand Cayenne Elementary. Same thing with Upper Little Cayenne. It's kind of in the same thing. Actually, I think Upper Little Cayenne may be a little bit more, a foot or two more, if I'm not mistaken on that. But uh, so, no, we're uh, moving forward. We're going to be beginning the design process, the redesign process, let me say that, on that. Not necessarily in the same footprint, because we're going to have to deal with ramps and stairs and elevators and things of that sort that weren't there before. You know, so it's going to be, it's going to change the site up quite a bit from that aspect. So, Mr. Port. Um, <clears throat> thank you for that update, and, and I'm glad that uh, Abair uh, formed. That, that's what Abair formed, that's correct. Uh, just not to be nitpicky, but in your notice of bid confirmation to the school board, you have the wrong address. So uh, it's right in the actual recommendation, but it's written incorrectly on the on that Dr. letter. You sent, okay. So I'm going to give it to Miss Alley to make sure that gets okay. squared away. I mean, I, that's I rely on my staff to to give that address. No so. worries. I just yeah, want. No, I understand. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Appreciate it. it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is that it, Mr. Uh, matter bearing upon maintenance updates, Mr. Poisson. Is he still here? <laughs> Took a nap back there? <laughs> All right, y'all want the 45 minute version or the two minute version? Two minute. All right. I'm going to give y'all the two minute. Two minute. <clears throat> Everything I had on my updates, y'all just heard from all of them out there. Uh, we had, Very good we had, <laughs> you done? We had uh, in our department, we had 260 uh, work orders called in. We had uh, 150 of those that were completed this past month. Uh, a lot of, you'll see on that graph that's there too, we have uh, a lot of the heating and air has went way down of the calls we did have, uh, we got more plumbing now, but uh, uh, it's, it's spreading out, air conditioning's going down. Of course, it's getting cooler. We're not having as much trouble, but hopefully with all this smoke clears, we won't have any trouble at all. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, Ms. Benoit. Yeah, I, I passed by South Terrebonne the other day and the modular buildings, they're brand new, right? I mean, those were new buildings when we got them. I noticed on where the air conditioners are, there's, it's like rusty coming down. Is that normal? That's, it's, that it's water, it's rust water leaking out from them that. Yeah, but I mean, it's not rusting out the, the, the exterior somehow? It's just rust water that's leaking. It's not rusting yeah, the just building. Staining. Yeah. And, it's and when attractive. they, and I when mean, they installed them, yeah. And when they installed them, they should have ran the pipe further down to the ground. That's the problem. That was, then. yeah. Okay. That was from the the uh, the company we bought them from, or renting them from, or yeah. leasing. Leasing. They they yeah. just didn't run that pipe I know. far I, enough down. I just down. thought it looked awful, you know, for being brand new modular buildings. Um, you know, that's the only bad part is the. Mr. Ford. Yeah. And we can see. Maybe we can put something on them, try to clean them. They'll charge it for us probably if we don't. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to know the status of the baseball, uh, the HLP baseball um, press box and the concession stand. How, how are we standing on that? Motion to adjourn. 
Um, I don't know where they're at on it right now. Uh, Yeah, because Andy's on. Andy's on that one. He's the architect on it. So, anybody else? Being no further business to come in front of the BFT, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Sweet. <laughs>